So, you may have heard about the 07-08 financial crisis and how it was caused by the housing crisis and speculation in financial derivatives. I remember how it felt trading through that tumultuous time, and it's one of the many reasons I'm studying finance now. Um, today, I'll touch upon financial derivatives known as options from a couple different perspectives. So to start off, financial derivatives are simply some financial instrument, say a contract or other agreement, that derives its value from, from something else. So a bet on who would win the Super Bowl is a financial derivative. An option at its core is simply that, an ownership of choice. For example, saving money gives us the ability to choose what to spend or invest the money in later. So the value of currencies to individuals like us is simply the value of the optionality that is provided when holding the money. So options that are commonly traded on the financial markets are standardized contracts that only differ in the underlying security, say stocks or commodities, the strike price, and the date of maturity. So in the Super Bowl example, the underlying security of the derivative is the Super Bowl, the outcome of the game. Um, the strike price would be the point differential between the winning and the losing team. Um, in the case of uh, typical uh, option contracts, it would be the price or the stock or commodity, which is the price of the underlying security. Um, and then the date of maturity is the last point in time you can redeem the financial benefits from the contract. So in options, that's called ex expiration date. Um, so to simplify everything graphically, we take time out of the equation and visualize um, visualize the option on a profit-loss chart, which uh, we can see here and up there. Um, so this picture is the profit-loss of a call option. A call option is the right to buy a certain security at a certain point in time. Um, so you have profit on the uh, y-axis, and then you have price of the underlying at on the x-axis, and um, at this this price right here, um, it's this is the oops, sorry. this is the strike price, um, which I mentioned earlier, it's the price at which um, the value of the option begins to increase. And so in this, in this chart, you can see that the price before the strike price um, is zero because having the option to buy a the underlying security at a price that is less than the current price of the underlying security. So in the case of a stock, say Apple shares are selling at $100, and um, below $100, you have the right to buy um, Apple stock. Basically, the value of the call option is worthless um, at a lower, at a lower uh, price of the underlying, and then it increases in value once you pass the strike, pass the strike price, uh, because it, the uh, call option is a right to buy the underlying security. Um, we also have put options, which are um, a right to sell a security. And so you'll have a kind of inverted um, profit loss graph. And so I guess now since I still have a bit of time, I'll try to connect options um, with another financial derivative known as futures. Um, futures are standardized contracts where an exchange of goods at a certain future date and at a certain future price is agreed upon. Um, and so what you'll notice in a futures contract or in a futures uh, profit loss chart is that it is essentially um, a profit loss of a call option connected with a profit loss of a put option. And so you'll actually end up with 
a uh, linear profit loss. Um, so from a purely financial standpoint, you can see that if you split a futures contract, you will actually have a right to buy and a right to sell, um, which is a call option <coughs> and a put option. So I hope you've all learned a little bit more about financial derivatives and that um, hopefully this knowledge will help you understand a little bit more about how, um, what exactly financial derivatives are and how it really um, impacts our lives today.